Howdy, hotshots. Beaming to you from not a financial advisor land with not financial advice. It's Kevin with Earth 2 Mastery, and it's time to flip a coin. So grab some pennies, because this video is not going to make any sense. I want to talk to you about how to get an immediate, risk-free 200% return on your money. Let's get it. Okay, uh, so... This is a chart of the lumber prices from the last year uh, having to do with the uh, COVID-19, probably uh, a little bit of restrictive lumber, but also inflation. The reason we're having inflation is because uh, most people around the country actually indicated that they made more money over the course of 2020 than they did in previous years. And then in addition to that, they really didn't have much to spend their money on. They were at home so they could spend money on um, people doing renovations, people doing DIY projects. Uh, people weren't working in the workplace, which means that you probably didn't have as much lumber getting produced. You didn't have as much lumber being sold. Uh, it's all led to this perfect storm. But it also has to do with inflation because of the people getting more money. And they were getting that money for free. So small businesses um, were able to get forgivable loans that they just spent on whatever they wanted to spend on, you know, building um, toys, whatever they wanted to do with it. And so that just creates inflation uh, overall. Now, a lot of people think that by doing quantitative easing and stuff like that, that the Fed is creating inflation. That's not necessarily the direct mechanism for creating inflation. But when banks have lower rates and banks make it easier to lend money, uh, then that leads to inflation because money makes it out into the market. Um, so that same type of thing happens whenever somebody gets direct checks. So they keep sending people stimulus. Uh, they keep paying people unemployment. Um, it's all leading to inflation. And so Biden just signed another $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill uh, in addition to, I believe, one that he signed when he first got in. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I am. I haven't stayed on top of it perfectly. Uh, but also in addition to the one uh, that Trump put out. And so there's been a lot of money making it out to businesses, making it out to um, the unemployed or underemployed, even if they weren't unemployed uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, now they are considered unemployed because it became more lax and the rules were easier to get the unemployment. So a lot of people are making more money now than they did when they were working or they kept working and they just got all of this money on top of what they had. And so it gave them uh, more money to spend on whatever it is that they wanted. It gave them a lot of discretionary income, especially because they weren't able to uh, go out and spend a lot of that money. So they were um, sitting on it uh, at home. They were spending it on uh, camping equipment. They were spending it on renovating their home. They were spending it on uh, services so that they could get stuff delivered. Uh, so a lot of money got spent in a lot of ways that it hadn't been spent before. A lot of people were able to spend money on goods that they can use long term. Uh, and that drove the price of all of those goods up and inflated those. But it seems like a never ending cycle. They keep passing these stimulus packages, which means that more and more money is still making it into the economy. And a per, uh, just to show you, this is pretty much proof that people are getting paid to do nothing. Restaurants survived the pandemic, but now they can't find workers. The reason that is, is because people are getting paid more to do nothing than they can make when they go to work. Uh, this, this is not a free market. Um, this is not a free market problem. People keep thinking, oh, well, if the restaurants can't get somebody, then they're just going to have to pay more. That's what the free market is. Yeah, that's what the free market is, assuming the government isn't stepping in and paying people to do nothing, uh, which creates an unfair competition situation, and it's no longer the free market. Um, so I uh, have this article here. Fact check. Yes, there's a national coin shortage. Here's why. I don't care what they say. They're lying about why there's a national coin shortage. The uh, Eventually, we're just not going to have any coins. It's too expensive to produce coins. Um, and the, it's going to be, you know, coins are going to be worthless as far as monetary value anyway, because they're paying people so much to do nothing that it's creating massive inflation uh, that's hidden in the CPI because of manipulations. And so they are going to uh, just do away with coins because they're not going to be able to buy anything anyway. So here's how you can benefit from this situation. Uh, get an immediate 200% return on your money, risk-free. <clears throat> I want to show you how to do it because I think we should all probably be doing this. Uh, if you go to coinflation.com, you can calculate the values of gold coins, silver coins. Those are pretty hard to find. They're not really circulating anymore. But one type of coin that is worth much more than face value uh, and you still haven't uh, seen them fall out of circulation 
is the older regular copper penny. Okay, so nowadays most of a penny is made of zinc. I have an example of one here. Uh, it's very shiny. You can see it's very shiny. This is a newer penny. The older pennies, you could see, uh, are a lot duller looking. That's from circulation, years of wear, but also because they're a different type of metal. So if you get a 1982 penny or older, it's actually worth three cents in melt value of copper. Um, so what you can do is you just go to your bank or you go and buy um, you go and buy coins from any kind of local business that's trying to get rid of their coins. You buy all these pennies and then you just sort through them and you keep the 1982 and older penny. So each penny has 0 0.0065 pounds of copper. Uh, if lumber prices have gone up, it wouldn't it would make sense that steel, copper, uh, any other kind of commodities prices are going to go up. So right now you get 200% return on your money because you buy it for a penny and then you keep it and it's worth three cents. But if, uh, if things keep happening, let's say things double because of inflation, now your copper's worth six cents, then you're actually going to make a 500% return on your uh, investment. And your investment is guaranteed because it's always going to be worth at least the face value of the penny. So you buy a penny for, for one cent, it's worth three cents, it cannot go below one cent. And so it's essentially risk-free, at least, um, at least numerically wise, because clearly we could go into a period of deflation where your one cent purchases you less than one cent did before. Uh, but that's not, that does not seem likely to me. And regardless, at least you still have your one cent. So uh, it's essentially risk-free, but I guess the risk would be deflation and that your one cent could have purchased you more of something else. Uh, but I wanted to share that with you because it's, it's not something that we're really competing with each other on. Uh, you can go to any local bank and get bags of pennies and then sort through them and then just take the ones back that you don't want. Uh, create yourself like a, a little storage of copper to hedge against inflation. Uh, and as far as the crypto dip that we're in, I haven't sold any of my Ecomi. I haven't sold any of my tokens. In fact, I'm lucky because I was able to buy the dip. I bought uh, some Algorand. I bought some X, uh, Stellar Lumens and I bought, uh, I got my ethereum back so you those of you who heard me complain about selling my ethereum and then not being able to get back in it uh, with this big dip i was able to get my ethereum back at a lower price than i sold it at so even though i've taken a hit on several of the tokens that i do own i'm pretty happy to get my ethereum back and i hope that it goes back up to all-time highs all right guys so if you could do me a favor just hit the subscribe button uh, next goal is 8 million subscribers we're pretty close so go ahead and help me out with that and i will talk to you later